Hi, my name is Sheridan Hansen, and we are here at the Agriculture Experiment Station in Kaysville, Utah, and we're talking today a little bit about our windbreak demonstration trial. So um, why you would want to have a windbreak on your farm um, is kind of a thing that should be discussed. Uh, the agriculture urban inter interface is coming very close together. Um, we, as we see more building, as we see more people coming into Utah, um, we're starting to have, you know, homes and residential areas right up next to our farm. So having a windbreak becomes an important factor, not just to block out and give privacy, but also to reduce dust and to reduce reduce noise and reduce pesticide or spray drift um, from your farm into the agricultural or into the residential areas. So behind me there are several different types of trees and shrubs that we've demonstrated as a windbreak and we actually looked at eight different trees and shrubs. So I'm standing in front of our aspens and our poplars and you can see they're really big, they're good size, they filled in the space really nicely. Um, just to the right of me, those are our cottonless cottonwoods. Then we have our columnar poplars, and then we have our Swedish aspen. And you can see that the poplars filled in the space a little bit better than the aspens did. Um, these aspens are very columnar, um, but they do a great job. This is only five years of growth, so they are very tall, very wide, and they have filled in the space nicely, giving you some protection um, to provide that um, barrier between you and a residential area. Now I'm in front of our juniper. This is a Taylor juniper and it's a very upright kind of narrow juniper. Um, you could see that we have a little bit of gap in between these plants and we probably could have spaced them a little bit tighter together um, in order to give us a little more protection. But it does very well. It's really well suited to Utah. Um, all of these trees get watered once a month for about 24 hours. They're receiving about 22 gallons of water per month and you can see how nice and green and thriving these plants are in those types of conditions. So this is a great selection for Utah. This is the prairie sentinel hackberry, and as you can see, they're probably not the most ideal plant to select for your windbreak. Um, they are a narrow columnar variety, but you can see I don't have a lot of foliage here on the base of the tree on a lot of these trees. Um, they just don't provide enough wind protection, enough dust protection, and then we seem to have a problem with them. We get this little gall um, on the back of the leaves, and this is, for, this is formed by a little insect that stings the leaf and um, causes these little growths gross on the back. And it's kind of stunted our plants a little bit because we've had such intense insect pressure. But this is the hackberry. Um, I would probably choose a different variety if it were me based on what we see here. This is um, kind of a shrub section in the windbreak. And these are plants that replace some of the plants that died, like the Leyland cypress and the hornbeam, both. So we replanted, um, this is the third year for these plants. This is the lilac. Um, and you can see that third year is starting to really take off. It's starting to um, produce some really nice new growth in it. Um, and you can see they're really nice and shrubby, a really good um, type of habit that they have. And I think this will be an excellent um, selection for windbreaks in Utah. It's incredibly drought tolerant. The other one that we have here is called the Cheyenne Privet. And the Cheyenne Privet is actually outgrowing the, the lilac a little bit. It's getting quite tall. It does put on a beautiful white bloom early in the spring. That bloom is just kind of finishing up. And this also has a really nice shrubby habit and is very well suited to dry conditions without a lot of supplemented water. Okay, these are the skinny jean oaks. These are supposed to be trees, but you can see that they're not. They're really short and really shrubby formed. This is supposed to be a columnar type oak. Um, what has happened is we've had a lot of deer pressure, um, particularly with this plant. And the deer come in, they rub, they eat the oaks. For some reason, they're very attracted to the oaks. So we're having, instead of trees, we're having shrubs. So this has not filled in the space very well. Again, we probably could have spaced it a little bit tighter. Our spacing was based on nur nursery recommendations, but obviously those recommendations were more for the Pacific Northwest and not for Utah. Um, but they've struggled a little bit, so this is probably not one that I would highly recommend, like how I would with the poplars and the aspens. 
If you are thinking about adding a windbreak to your property, costs can become an issue. Obviously, the poplars and the cottonwoods are a lot less expensive than some of these really hybridized varieties like the skinny jeans oak that didn't perform as well anyway. Um, so you may want to stick with some of the more common varieties, easier to find, um, definitely those poplars. Um, the Swedish aspens were a little bit less expensive. Um, the hackberries were kind of moderate. Um, and the lilacs, of course, are not terribly expensive, um, where the Cheyenne privet might be a little bit more pricey. So um, hopefully this will help you figure out which plants you want to add to the edges of your property to help give you some protection.